um, artificial intelligence, probably the fastest growing development in the world of technology and innovation. Every age has its scientific discoveries and inventions, but today's scientific advancements can impact globally in a very short time. Such, such is the progress made in the field of AI. Everything we love about civilization is a product of intelligence. So amplifying our human intelligence with artificial intelligence has the potential of helping civilization flourish like never before. As long as we manage to keep the technology beneficial. AI, it's not just science fiction, powerful machines and algorithms are already capable of diagnosing illnesses, performing surgeries and driving autonomous cars. In this growing world, AI is the most important factor that is keeping almost everyone in the world on their toes. Fortunately, UAE has never been the one to stay behind in the AI race. This session will provide information about how UAE can be on the, one of those leading countries to make use of this incredible technology of AI. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Mr. Mohammed Rushdi, who has joined us as the session chair, and he's the chief information officer and chief digital officer at FinTech and Digital Transformation Advisor as well. And he has been named as one of the top 50 digital leaders by CXO Insights, Middle East Magazine of 2020. Other than that, he holds more than 25 years of experience in technology, of which more than 12 years as CIO and COO in financial services industry. So please, uh, Mr. Mohammed Rishti, take it away from me. Thanks a lot. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everybody. Um, thanks a lot, Zahra, for the introduction. And really, it's uh, it's amazing to be here today discussing a very inspiring and important topic, you know, AI, you know, AI, artificial intelligence, as Zahra indicated, it will really touch not only businesses, business and society, and even more society. Today, one of the most important technologies everybody is talking about, which is expected to have a, a, a very big impact on our uh, life, is artificial intelligence. Uh, Today I'm very happy to uh, you know to share this uh, this uh, event, and we hope to have more in the future, inshallah. And I'm very happy as well to you know introduce two uh, key speakers. I would say like they need no introduction actually. Uh, we'll start with Dr. Zubair Hanslot, Borovost University of Bolton. I think Dr. Zubair, you know all of you know it. You are in the, in the same school. Dr. Zubair has over than 40 years of experience, you know, 40 years of experience, which is between uh, businesses as well as academic, and has been chairing many of the uh, academic uh, uh, studies uh, here and in London, in UK, and I would like to hear from him and learn from him uh, in the first place. Please, Dr. Zubair, please. Yeah, the classic mistake of <laughs> having the microphone muted. I'm really sorry. Mohammed, okay. uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm really grateful for your kind introduction. Uh, first of all, welcome, welcome to this uh, wonderful webinar. Uh, and welcome from not only the University of Bolton Russell Keimer campus, but welcome from the University of Bolton main campus in England. Um, the weather here is not as nice, I was speaking to some of the, some of the colleagues uh, before, the weather here is not as nice as what you have over there, so I'm, I'm rather jealous. I wish I was there with you in person, but we are, we are living in a changed world. Before I uh, go on to introduce the main speaker, Dr. Saeed, I want to say a few words about uh, the university, the profile of the university, and what we are doing, because everybody is always interested in how the organization is moving through, and particularly moving through the pandemic now, and um, what role we are playing. Uh, I think some of you will be probably surprised to learn that the University of Bolton ha has its heritage back to 1824. Now, if you think about it, that's 196 years ago we were formed. Now, universities are institutions that do, you know, do sort of stand the test of time. A lot of people are saying, well, the pandemic will wipe out universities and institutions and so on. I actually disagree. 
I think we will evolve, we will change, but we will still be here, okay? Because human nature has a desire, has a quest. And that desire and that quest is to self-learn, is to learn something and is to advance. And that is so powerful now, more so than ever, because we have created machines that can self-learn. And today's talk will be very much focused around the expertise that the speaker has in, in almost visualizing the future, setting the scene to say, what is it we need to do in order to prepare ourselves for the future? So we as humanity is advancing. So we bring prosperity, comfort, wealth, all security, all the things we desire. Going back to the University of Bolton, in the 196 years of our formation, one thing which is quite remarkable, and I was just looking at this sort of when I was reading the profile uh, for our speaker, and what is remarkable here is that we stand on the cusp of a revolution, and our speaker is going to be talking about Industry 4.0, and artificial intelligence. Would you believe that University of Volta was formed in 1824 because of the industrial revolution at the time? So that was in our modern times and 200 years for humanity is not a long time as you know. In the modern times in 1824, particularly Britain, a lot of Europe were going through the industrial revolution phase. So we were formed because of that. And our formation was to help to advance that industrial revolution. We continued and we changed in the way we did our work, which was to teach, to support and so on. And we, as an institution, we passed through the second industrial revolution, which some of you might be old enough, like me to remember, which was in the seventies. And that industrial revolution was the computer revolution, the age of the information, the technology that came about. And some of you may even remember the words that were branded at the time is, we will have a paperless office. Never before were so words spoken that were so untrue because we generated more paper in the way we were doing things. Anyway, that was the second industrial revolution. Then in the 90s, came the third industrial revolution. And I think you've guessed it. We are here because of the third inter industrial revolution. That's the age of the internet. And the age of the internet was actually founded because of the Cold War between Russia and America. They say that necessity is a mother invention. The Americans invented the internet as a way of communicating in a coded fashion in a fast way. So if there is a, a threat, you know, a, a, a sort of a hostile threat, they can prepare themselves. And then when the Cold War sort of ended, they released that technology to the world. So the age of the internet was, was formed. And now we internet is pervasive and we are here because of the internet. But where we stand now is really at the frontiers of a new age. And that new age is artificial intelligence. Some people are quite afraid of artificial intelligence. Even Stephen Hawking himself, he said, AI is so powerful, it will be the demise of humanity. It will wipe out humanity. I, I don't quite subscribe to that. I think AI is powerful. I think we have what it takes to control it. It is just like any other thing, a dangerous chemical, a nuclear bomb. If we put in the safeguards and the things in place, we can control it. Now your university, the University of Bolton, is preparing itself for the AI age. We are going through a pandemic, and I think out of all the universities in the UK, we were the first to announce that we will open for classes in a safeguarded way. We were first to announce that we will effectively monitor every student and track and trace them 
and we have a system in place where not only students come on campus and we guarantee some on campus learning, but they have QR codes in the seats of learning they occupy, which scans their presence and which alerts them, which alerts us that if anybody has been tested positive, then we can granulate who to isolate and who to protect and advise. So we don't have to close the whole campus. That is clever thinking, that is using the technology in the way we can best use it. And this is, I guess this is what this forum is about. So I'm not gonna say any more because I can talk for hours and hours, but what I can say is the speaker who we have today, he comes with some fantastic credentials. As I said, he's a futurist. He's the man you need to speak to if you want to see what's going to happen in the future. A lot of people will follow his lead. He is a public note speaker. He's a veteran of the technological advancement in the UAE. He's got over 30 years of experience in driving innovation and adaptation. He has held many positions, too many to name here, but to say he's been a former director general of the Emirates Idea Authority. I'm, I'm very impressed with the Emirates Idea Authority in the sense that I know every a uh, person living in the Emirate has to have an ID card. And that ID card comes back to a central database which tracks and, and supports and traces where, it re where, it re where it's required. We in Europe, unfortunately, don't have that because of many other situations and problems. I just yes. wish we had somebody like Dr. Saeed leading the way. I'm not gonna say any more because I will steal his thunder but just to say, I would like to present to you your speaker for today, Dr. Saeed, a futurist, a technologist, and a public speaker. Welcome, Dr. Saeed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zubair. I think uh, you have said, um, you know, maybe half of the things which I'm going to talk about. And it was really uh, a very interesting introduction uh, to this um, to this talk tonight you know the uh, the importance of the industrial the fourth industrial revolution that we are on the cusp you know to enter at the, the moment and 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 also the importance of uh, of artificial intelligence so so you spared me some time um, I have about uh, first of all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh let me greet you all uh, thank you, Dr. Zubair. Uh, thank you, University of Bolton, um, UK, and Russell Kema branch for inviting me. To Sorry this. to just interrupt. Can I just interrupt for one second? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, obviously, I introduced you, but I think Brother Muhammad might want to just invite you formally. I'm really sorry. It's my fault because okay. I never follow the script. <laughs> Brother Muhammad, no, I'm Doctor, really I think. Uh, no, I, I have to thank you very much as well. I think you've done great. And I think, uh, you know, Dr. Saeed is uh, no need to introduce oh. him. <laughs> the only thing I want to tell uh, also the, the, the crowd, the people are attending. Dr. Saeed is a co-author of Digital Nation book. It's about UE and uh, AI and how the he was getting the start. I, I really advise everyone to look at this book. It's a, it's a very interesting book. I'm very proud also that I have a copy from the book. So this is one thing I need just to add to many things which you added. I think Dr. Said deserve it. Thanks a lot. Please go ahead. And um, a question, actually, any uh, uh, attendees can put questions at any time on the chat and we'll take care of it at the end of the, of the, of the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, I, I think you, you said, you know, everything about me. Uh, I just hope that uh, I'm going to deliver an interesting and enriching presentation tonight uh, to, our, uh, to our audience. Uh, I usually strive to inspire people, and I hope I can do the same. Uh, well, for the sake of the time, I think I'm having around 40 to 45 minutes um, to present around 25, 26 slides. So bear with me. I hope you find it interesting. And Mohammed, just remind me of the time. Uh, I want to interact with the audience. I want to get some questions, you know, from the audience. Uh, so, so let's start. Um, if you uh, give me the host, so I can uh, put my uh, presentation, please. Uh, 
Okay. Right. Okay, I think we are ready to to go. Okay, uh, here we are. Uh, okay, so so uh, my talk for tonight, uh, I'm gonna focus a little bit about what uh, our country, the United Arab Emirates, is doing in this space uh, in the AI. Uh, since the announcement of the UAE AI strategy in, 20, uh, in 2017. So, uh, and, and in particular, I wanna speak about, uh, can the UAE be at the forefront of the AI race? We, we all see that there is an AI race uh, going on uh, between major um, countries around the world and many countries have announced AI strategies, you know, from China to the US, and there is a debate who's going to dominate China or the US, and of course, uh, plus other countries, Canada, UK, France, uh, Germany, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, India, Russia, and of course, here in the region, the United Arab Emirates and, and Israel. So these uh, countries which have announced their AI strategy since 2000, since 2017. And uh, let's see who's going to be among the top, you know, 10, 15 countries uh, that will lead the AI race. And in particular, uh, can the UAE be at the forefront in the AI race? Uh, I'm not gonna say yes or no. Let's go through this presentation. And uh, I would like uh, you to judge this and, and to say, whether the UAE can be at the forefront in the AI race, which I hope um, it can, you know, and as we're gonna go through this presentation, I'll show you, you know, what the UAE is doing uh, really to be at the forefront in the AI race. So um, uh, I'm just looking at the time. Okay, so it's almost 10 to eight now. So I'll run until probably 8.20 and then we'll take some questions. Okay, so uh, this is a brief about me. I think uh, Dr. Zubair and Mohammed Rishdi has, has said a lot about me, uh, but uh, I've been into this uh, since I was doing my master's degree in George Washington University, and it was about AI. It was about um, uh, neural networks at that time. This was 1988. So you're talking about what, uh, almost, let's say um, 28 years ago uh, and was at, it was about also applying uh, neural networks to uh, and within in the, in the healthcare about classifying is acute, acute ischemic heart disease. I had to work at that time at the New England Medical, uh, New, uh, New England um, um, uh, hospital in, in, in Boston uh, to train uh, the system uh, you know, uh, based on some symptoms for people coming to uh, complain from chest pain. And we, I wanted to build a, a classifier or a predictor uh, about heart attack, whether a person coming with those symptoms will have a heart attack and at what, and what probability. So this was done in 1988. And I remember at that time, it took me almost three days uh, running the network it was a small classifier network using back propagation algorithm that almost took me three days for the network to learn on the different, and it was about around 1,000 use cases that I, you know, was very small set at that time. Uh, but just imagine how, how, you know, performance, computing performance were, were, you know, at that time in 1988 when I used an IBM 80 machine, a 286 uh, machine. Uh, so yeah, I've been into this since, since, since that time. Of course, uh, AI went through so many uh, things, ups and downs. Uh, came back to the UAE, started teaching at the UAE University, but I went a little bit off from the AI because at that time, it wasn't about AI because the computer was not so high, the algorithms were not advanced, and the data, there wasn't, you know, big data like we see today, but now everything came back 
with all these uh, 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 development and, and, the, and the computing power uh, and the amount of big data that we have and also in the improvement of, of neural networks, deep learning, machine learning, you name it. So again, this, this area has flourished for the past 10 years. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I've been speaking about this and, and also I think I consider myself really lucky and proud to be uh, uh, accepted to give a guest uh, uh, talk at Oxford University. This will be next January, inshallah. Um, and I will be the first uh, one from the United Arab Emirates to really speak at Oxford University. This is a dream come true, you know, going to speak at, at, at the number one university in the world, you know. So, um, and I have published uh, this book, Digital Nation. Uh, you can see it it's with, with, with myself and my uh, colleague, um, Ranjit Rajan. Uh, we published it in 2019. Uh, next month, we will launch the Arabic version of the book. And uh, since we launched the book, it has gained a lot of uh, attention, not just only in the UAE, but regional and also international. Uh, I was really happy to see uh, people speaking about our book at uh, the Oslo Innovation Week in Norway, you know, um, and it was at one time uh, one of the best technology bestsellers in, 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 in Amazon. So without spending much, much time, but uh, this was just an introduction about myself, let's go to, to, the, to the main uh, subject. I always like, uh, you know, to 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 quote, you know, our our leaders, uh, especially with their uh, with their inspiring vision, where they are taking us, where they are taking the UAE. And since this is, you know, this talk is about, you know, how the UAE can lead, you know, uh, in, in artificial intelligence. I, I thought that, uh, you know, I need to quote His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler uh, uh, of Dubai, uh, saying that artificial intelligence is the next major revolution of our time. Our goal is to be one of the most advanced countries in this regard. So our goal is to be really one of the most advanced countries uh, uh, in artificial intelligence. Also, uh, I'm always uh, as well inspired by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. And he said, really, he summarized, uh, I think, what I'm going to talk tonight about in, 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 in this paragraph. And this was, uh, you know, four months ago. Uh, when we uh, when we were you know yani at at the mid of the of, of this uh, COVID nineteen crisis, and he was addressing the nation and he was addressing uh, uh, the, the emergency uh, 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 response team who's responsible for to manage the crisis in the UAE. So he said we are in a race to the day of judgment. So we are in the ra on a race to, to to a day of judgment with the whole world. We can advance with two things: with knowledge and with the distinguished national cadres, so it's two things with knowledge and distinguished national cadres that will lead the country in the 21st and the 22nd century with capability that seeks the help of God. Okay, we always seek guidance and help from, from God and with artificial intelligence and technology. So imagine when the leadership of the country, they have this vision and they rally the nation to drive this vision, to, to execute and to drive this vision. So it's really an inspiring you know, statement from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. So the question, can the UAE be at the forefront in the AI race by 2030 within the next 10 years? Let's see, I, 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 uh, let's see how, what the UAE is doing. But one thing is that our minister of AI said also, whoever leads the AI race will lead the future. And this was uh, during an interview, uh, you know, uh, and one of his speech at the IMD. And there were so many things, so many activities going on with panel discussions, researchers talking about it, you know, in Harvard, at the MIT, on, on, on nations, uh, you know, across nations about the AI supremacy. And like uh, Putin has said, whoever lead the AI is going to lead 
the supremacy is going the nation is going to be you know the supreme nation and the su superior nation you know uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the world so with all that you know the ai race to achieve uh, superiority and national advantage so ai like we hear this is a foundational technology to achieve uh, innovation ad advantage and and is considered to be a game changer a game changer in the way we we're going to live, in the way we are going to work, in the way we're going to learn, uh, in the way we will be diagnosed with diseases and also for the cure of diseases. Uh, it's an engine of economic growth. Uh, it's going to boost, you know, competitiveness, you know, through human augmentation, the relationship between the man and the machine, and with the algorithmic uh, algorithmic um, in interventions in our in, in our lives uh, it's gonna uh, protect national security you know it's gonna help uh, solve societal challenges uh, climate change you name it those grand challenges that our society are are facing today we are looking uh, that AI is gonna help us, you know, solve uh, uh, those, uh, those, those, those challenges. Uh, so it's not only about, you know, adopting AI, of course, you know, everybody can, can, can go and, you know, seek solutions, but, but more is about applying AI creatively, how we can creatively apply this technology and more importantly, responsibly, you know, responsibly, that means that the world needs to establish uh, a universal guiding principles, uh, talking about, you know, uh, privacy and, and, and data governance, talking about transparency of, 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 of the technology itself, the diversity and non-discrimination non and, and fairness when it comes to the uh, algorithmic performance, uh, okay, societal and environmental well-being, the accountability, uh, and 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 the robustness and safety of 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 the algorithms i think we need to build this universal uh, uh, guiding the principles and there is efforts going on which i will speak from the oecd and from uh, uh, the global partnership in ai to try to establish uh, a world uh, universal agreement on 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 these principles so so part of it is the technology itself but more importantly is how we use this technology in our society. And I like, and I always like this philosophical issue is that technology is a mirror of us, is a mirror of a human being, the way we behave, the way we act, this is reflected in the technology, you know. Uh, so, so I hope that we can use this tool as, 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 a, uh, as a way for good, as a force for good, you know, uh, you know, for the good of the humanity. Okay, so the UAE has strategized on AI and disruptive technologies to enable its, its digital economy. Uh, our UAE 2021 vision uh, of focusing on establishing knowledge-based economy. Uh, we have, uh, the UAE came up with the UAE Centennial Plan that's a long, way vision to 2071. 2071 is when the UAE is going to celebrate the 100th anniversary. And with that vision, UAE wants to be the number one country in the world. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's a grand vision, you know, for our leadership to put this vision forward. You know, we are next year we're going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of, 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 of our country. But at the same time, we are planning 2020 was made the year for towards the next 50 years, you know, and there is a, a tremendous effort going on and the government at the moment taking feedback from the public, from the citizens, from the expat about, you know, how we see our countries developing in the next 50 years and how we can see UAE is leading in the next 50 years. We had so many meetings with our ministers just a week ago. I had a meeting with the Minister of Advanced Technology. And I think now there was an announcement yesterday from the Minister of AI. They want to listen to people. They want to listen to the citizens, how we can develop our our country so we can be at the forefront and we can be a leading country by 2071. That's a grand vision and it's going to take, you know, probably 
some iterations up to 2030, from 2030 to 2040, and so forth, until we reach, uh, you know, 2071. We are at the Center for Future Studies at the University of Dubai, as, as we have developed also, you know, a, a future foresight model. We call it Future Foresight 2071, uh, that, you know, we can look into 2071 and identify the signals of change. What, how, what are the, the, the the, the main trends or the mega trends and what are the small signals that we see happening that is going to impact us and affect you know our future uh, uh, within the next 50 years and this needs a constant effort of, of review you know in order to update uh, uh, this 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 uh, this agenda but yes we have uh, uh, the country has also announced the UA artificial intelligence strategy 2031 uh, we have also a fourth industrial revolution strategy and also the aim of this fourth industrial revolution strategy for UAE to be a world open lab to test and apply for IR technologies. Uh, we have, as you see in the picture here, the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, where we really, you know, testing some of the technologies like, you know, blockchain and, 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 and AI and precision medicines, you know, with the World Economic Forum and the UAE was selected as one of the uh, uh, centers around the world for uh, for the fourth industrial revolution we have also smart uh, smart city strategies and smart cities is also an important you know a driver uh, uh, you know and a catalyst to adopt artificial intelligence whether in the transportation whether in 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 in, in healthcare whether uh, uh, in, in a traffic management, uh, you name it, you know, a smart city, you know, and with the aim of Dubai to be uh, uh, not just only the smartest city by 2021, but also the happiest city on earth by 2021. So we have grand initiatives and visions that the country has already established. And, and these technologies, we can see where they fit within uh, 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 these, uh, um, these visions. But definitely, uh, going forward, uh, I think uh, very important uh, and, and, and key issues that we need to take care of is the talent development, how we're we going to develop our local talent, not just only local talent, but also how we're going to attract, you know, uh, uh, global talent to come to the UAE uh, and, you know, to work and to develop these technologies uh, 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 and and also the other issues about R and D. You know how we're gonna take. You know how we're gonna develop our R and D system to be one of the leading. You know R and D ecosystems in the world. And I think this is an important issue that we are discussing at the moment with the ministers going forward to the next fifty years. And also is about policies and regulations. How we're gonna develop. You know our policies and regulations so it, they're gonna allow for such technologies. To be to be used in society. So uh, this is uh, the UAE um, stra AI strategy 2030-31. It was announced in October 2017, and the target, like the minister has said, we want UAE to be uh, to become the world most prepared country for artificial intelligence. So that is our our goal for the UAE to be the most prepared country. Uh, for AI. And I like when he said that we will transform the UAE into a world leader in AI by investing, by investing in people and industries that are key to our success. This is where we're going to focus by investing in talent, whether it's local talent or expat talent to come and work in the UAE, and also by focusing on key industries, the energy sector, uh, the transportation, uh, food, uh, security, uh, uh, healthcare, uh, space. These are, you know, uh, uh, sectors of a priority that we want to invest in and adopt, you know, uh, government services, of course, reinventing government services where we're going to uh, use AI in these sectors. Uh, we have established an AI, uh, an, an AI office who is driving this strategy and executing this strategy and uh, a national program for artificial intelligence that lists many uh, initiatives and the programs that, wants, that, that we want to, 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 to execute. And also the country, the government has established a national AI council 
It's called National AI and Blockchain Council that looks into AI uh, governance, that looks into AI adoption within the governments that recommend, give recommendation uh, on a federal level, you know, to implement and execute the AI strategy. Looking into, I'm not going to go deep into this, but, but this shows really, you know, the, the key uh, strategic or eight strategic objectives uh, for the AI strategy. Uh, I mean, our ultimate vision is to become one of the leading nation in AI by 2030. When, it, when I say one of the leading nation, that's, that means to be among the top 10, probably among top 10, 15 nations in the world uh, and, and adopting and using AI in the government and the private sector. And, and, and these objectives start with, with this you know, leadership vision to build a reputation as an AI destination. And the good thing about these objectives, there is a, a key uh, initiative or a program uh, that will drive these, uh, these objectives. So for example, building a reputation as an AI destination. So the UAE wants to establish, what is it called? UAI brand. And the UAI brand is a, as a mark recognizing the high quality and ethical uh, uh, comp AI companies uh, that will come and work on the AI and by attracting talent and, and, and uh, you know, for the safe and efficient and verified AI technology uh, that will eventually give, what is it called, a UAI seal of approval for this technology. The important thing about AI, as, as I see it, is really to establish a trust. Can, to, can we trust the technology today? And, or, and in order to trust the technology, w uh, th there are some principles which, which has to happen like the accountability, that like the transparency, like the explainability of the algorithm, like the fairness in the, in the data, like the ethical concerns. We have to answer all this so the society and the, and, and the corporates can trust the technology. Uh, and, and then going into the pillars of this, I think, you know, some of the, I'm not going to go through, you know, each one of these, I think we don't have time to go through this, but I'm, I'm going to speak about some of the important things. Uh, one of the foundation of these objectives is attract and train talent for the future jobs enabled by the AI. And the government has done a wonderful job when it comes. And now you, you speak to uh, the executives, people at the executive position, like the minister of AI and the people at the, exec uh, the, at the executive level. And to, the, to some extent, they understand what the technology is. And I'll show you how we, the government has spent on training the executives, not just only executives, but the people at large, the public at large, and also equipping students with the necessary skills they need to flourish in this world. And also it was about bringing world leading research capability to work with target industry. So, you know, I, I think this is one area of focus is that how we can build a strong R&D, you know, capability within the UAE and applied AI research that will take it to the commercial, to commercialization from ideas to applied research that will come into products and services at the end. And I think this is one of the important, um, uh, important objective. Uh, provide data and supporting infrastructure that will be essentially to become a test bid of, for AI. Uh, and then also adopt AI across government services to improve lives of, of people. These are some of the initiatives which the government, which the AI office, and it was mentioned in the AI strategy that we want to execute uh, applied AI accelerator. We want to establish a strong startup uh, AI ecosystem in the UAE uh, that will work with the government, you know, solving uh, certain challenges uh, and, and then will accelerate the AI adoption within the government. Also building AI network across the UAE from researchers, from experts within the countries, you know, to, to have a dialogue of how, you know, you know how we can uh, uh, accelerate the adoption of the UAE in, in, in the country. Uh, also is about, you know, uh, establishing a national AI challenge. And, and this is like it's going to be between universities and research centers to work on challenging issues that the government and the society 
faces and you know provide solution ai solution to solve to solve those issues and the winners are going to be celebrated and 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 incentivized you know with 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 big and, and, and uh, incentives it's also about building a national virtual ai institute it's about tapping into the world resources not just only the talent and the resources which are available here in the uae but on a global level as well and also it's about building a secure data infrastructure i mean one thing is building the technology infrastructure that will support you know, high performance computing. And uh, now we're talking about quantum computing, as I will explain in, 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 in a moment, what we do, what the UAE is a plan is planning to do into into in, in, in that area. And also it's about partnerships. I think the government by itself cannot do this by its own. The government need to have partnership in education, partnership in applied research, partnership in the in the governance of AI, uh, local and, and international partnership so we can build this uh, ecosystem and also provide incentive schemes for overseas companies to for overseas ai companies to come and 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 establish themselves here in the uae so uh, looking into this this is like you know um, the, the strategies that has have been announced you know from from the different uh, countries in, in ai uh, but also uh, this this uh, slide shows uh, are the, uh, the, uh, the common pillars among those strategies. And this is from Oxford Insight and in, in cooperation with the International uh, Development and Research Center in Canada. So they have looked into those strategies and they have identified the common pillars. These common pillars are the government and public services. So, you know, those countries are interested to adopt AI and apply AI to enhance government and public services, to build capacity and the skills and education, you know, so, you know, people can, can, can really have the right skills, especially when it comes, when we see that with this, with the advancement in robotics and all that, how is this going to, how is the relationship between the man and the machine is going to evolve in time? And the research and development, the data and digital infrastructure, of course, the ethics, the, reg the regulation, and the risks. These are the important pillars that that AI is th that we need to focus on. You know, to drive forward to execute uh, AI strategies. I think I have to speed up a little bit because uh, I, probably I have another ten slides to go. Uh, but. Uh, uh, this here shows a, a study from uh, PwC, and it shows the economic impact of AI on the, on the world GDP. Uh, looking into that, the AI by 2030 is going to contribute around $15.7 tri trillion to the world G GDP. The UAE share of this is about 14% or 96 billion US dollar by 2030. So, you know, uh, we are really looking to tap into that economic uh, you know uh, uh, impact and the growth which 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 can come from the from the air that is if we really adopt ai in the way we want we, we, i mean in, in the way as 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 was laid in in in, uh, in our uh, ai strategy 2030 uh, 2031 and this is going to contribute a 33% of annual growth rate in the ua in ai for the uae for the next 10 uh, for the next 10 years if we look into uh, where we stand today in, in the AI, and, and I like to look into these indices, international indices, as a way not really to trust them and to believe in them, but at least to be able to see where we stand and, and, and where, how do we compare ourselves, you know, uh, with the rest of the others. And this is again from Oxford Insight, uh, their government AI readiness index. Today, UAE is 16th, is number 16th in the world when it comes to AI readiness. In fact, uh, is how, how the country is ready to implement uh, AI. And that's not a bad rank, but I think uh, we need to improve our ranking in this in, in, the, in the AI readiness, and we need maybe to be among the top 10, uh, 10 countries in the world when it comes to AI readiness. Uh, so this goes through uh, 33 indicators and 10 dimensions and 172 countries were assessed 
uh, on, on this study and it compared the current state of government AI uh, uh, readiness. But when, when you look into also the sub indices, indices, indices within, this, uh, within, the, within this main index, UAE is number 26 in the responsible use of AI. So that means that we have to enhance our position in how we want to use AI responsibly. And, I, and then there are some, of course, there are some initiatives that was, 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 uh, that was you know, uh, done in the UAE, but I think we need to move forward you know, on this because I think uh, the, 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 the big thing here is really to establish a trust in the technology. If the society and if the corporates and if our government and if our organization, they trust these algorithms, uh, uh, through the different mechanisms, the, the responsible use of AI, the fairness, the accountability, the transparency, the responsibility, uh, the, the, the robustness and security, I think we, we can enhance our, our position uh, uh, and the responsible use of AI. Uh, uh, and this is another important index from INSEAD, uh, and it's the, it's the Global Talent Competitiveness Index. And when you see, you know, our talent today, where the UAE stands, UAE is number 22nd, is, is number 22 in the world of talent. And the enabling and the enablement, it's 22nd in attract, at, attracting talents. We are number three. We are good at attracting attracting. Foreign, uh, foreign talent, in the growing talent, we are number 24. So that means we have to do a lot to grow our local talent in AI. I mean, you know, we will not accept to be, you know, beyond the first 10, 15 countries in the world. So I think the, 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 the point here is that we need to look where, where we are strong and where we need to improve and how we can improve uh, and on, 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 on building the capacity and the skills and talent. So um, what I'm saying here is that we need more work, you know, uh, to enable, grow and retain, uh, and retain talents. Again, uh, uh, this is the World Economic Forum Global Competitiveness Index. Uh, I read there is no time really to go into this, but all this highlighted in yellow is to see where UAE ranks today. If you looking into skill of current workforce, we are 15. Uh, skill set of graduates, we are 14. That means the UAE graduates uh, are, uh, we're, our rank is 14th in the world, and that is not bad. Digital skills among the active population. We are 14. Ease of finding skilled employees. We are number eight. Critical thinking and teaching. Look, we are number eight. And, and that's a good thing. That means, you know, our, our, our students at, school, at schools and at the universities, uh, you know, uh, is like uh, is, is that we pay attention to critical thinking, how we teach. Yeah, and this is one of the most Require the skills for the fourth industrial revolution is you 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 allow people to critic to to instill critical thinking to think critically so they can you know solve solve complex uh, uh, challenges, uh, but when it comes to innovation we are thirty three when it comes to research and development we are number fifty, and that is not good that is not good I will not. I don't like to be in this in, in this rank, and I think we need to do a lot in terms of of, of, of R and D. And I think the government is addressing this issue going forward to the next fifty. But this shows overall where the UAE ranks, and 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 what do we need to do? And, and I like this from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed when he says that the competitiveness of the UAE is continuously improving globally. And during 2020, the year of the global health crisis, we topped 79 new international indicators. We topped 79 new international indicators, and we are among the top, uh, the 10 most competitive countries globally in 300 international indicators. Our message to everyone at home and abroad, the UAE does not have development option other than superiority and continuity. Retreat is not an option. So when our leadership are, are really looking into and, and, and observing these indicators and looking at the country competitiveness worldwide among these so many indicators, I think this is a sign 
that uh, we are going in the right direction. We are, we are driven by a vision of our leadership. Uh, they, they inspire us. Uh, like I have uh, mentioned uh, in our book, The Digital Nation, uh, we, we took this vision as, as, as a personal quest, you know, from, 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 from us to really, uh, we take it with a, with, we take it with a, with, with a, with a passion uh, to execute, you know, uh, uh, this vision. But when we speak about the AI education uh, and the R&D, uh, looking, and, and this is, from my research about the accredited programs, the computer science and engineering programs in the UAE. We have 22 BSc level uh, programs in computer science, science, eight master level program, one PhD program. This is uh, 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 from, from, from the site of the uh, uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, artificial intelligence program, we have four MS level, uh, uh, programs and three PhD level programs, data science. These are the new new programs, the artificial intelligence and data science. We have two bachelor level and two MS level. Cybersecurity, we have two bachelor level. And these are some of the universities that, you know, during my research, I found that they have uh, really developed uh, programs within AI and data science. It started with the, uh, the British University of Dubai. It was the first university to announce a bachelor degree in artificial intelligence. And then we have, you know, other universities like, of course, Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence, which is focused on master and PhD level and growing, you know, uh, research and, you know, uh, uh, accepting uh, students from around the world to pursue their master and PhD and focus more on, on, on applied research and, of course, on, 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 on patenting and, 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 and uh, publication, you know, on, uh, on, uh, on AI. Uh, what we say here is that also we need to focus on online education, the many degrees and the micro masters that are offered now by the online platforms such as Coursera, Udemy, um, EDX. So where are our universities from, from these short online, uh, on, online courses? Probably we have an issue with the, with the, with the regulation and that I think we need not just only I think, but I believe we need to change the regulation because look at the world biggest companies. They are recruiting people with micro degrees, with these many degrees, and they are not interested, you know, with the people coming with a master or, or, or you know, a, a, but more into specific courses. If you can show a strength and if you can show a skill in, 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 in Python, if you can show a skill in, in data science, if you can show a skill in AI and machine learning uh, that you can use and develop machine learning, then those companies will take you. They are not interested to, to and not, it's not about not interested, but they prefer to take, to take uh, students with, or, 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 or you know, applicants and employees with, with, with these many degrees rather than when you deal with the university degrees. I'm not saying that this is the right thing, and I'm not saying that the universities are going to vanish. No, I think the universities can play an important role and they can, they can adapt and they can see how they can fill this skill gaps, you know, how they can, the, the, they can teach the students the necessary skills that is required. And of course, going forward with this, our 2020, you know, year that, that I said was, you know, announced towards designing the, uh, the, the, the next 50 is that we are looking into a new education vision for the next 50 years. And I think, you know, I, I think this will take us, will put us in the right direction, you know, and, and there was last week, there was a big meeting with the Minister of Education and with the university provost from, from all the UAE, you know, uh, to, 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 to speak about how to revive the education system. Mohammed here is, 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 I think, coming to, to show me that I have some okay. time. And it's a great talk, Doctor. Quickly, yes, Mohammed, please. Yeah, five minutes. I can go quickly through some of the things. Uh, I, I think uh, probably I need maybe an hour and a half to two hours to, to conduct my lecture as I speak about, because there are so many things and my presentation is really very condensed. But let me show you some of the things which 
the uh, the country has really uh, worked on on developing the national talent we have announced an ai skills academy you know between uh, and it was a partnership between the ai office and and higher colleges of technology we have graduated around 120 senior from the government that went into a, a six month a six to eight month training program intensive training program in ai with oxford university we have done a uae ai camp you know taking the students and and summer and winter holidays for two weeks you know to teach them ai uh, schools are thinking now to have AI within their curriculum. Uh, we have the Arab one million, uh, one million coder initiative is really to teach, you know, to teach one million Arab uh, about coding, you know, Python and, and different. And they have graduated more than 22,000 from this program since its inception two years ago. Uh, look into this, uh, uh, the, we have the Emirati Coder Initiative, and look at this girl, a seven years, seven year old girl, and this was in front of me because I was a judge at this Emirati uh, Coder Initiative, where she is building, you know, uh, and she is uh, programming a robot to do a certain task, and this is a local seven year old you know, there. So this is what we think about when we think, you know, really to, 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 to educate our future, our future generation. This is what we want to instill from early childhood. Uh, again, you know, a Ministry of uh, Ministry of Education. They have a program that is around the country to cheat to teach students Python and uh, uh, and robotics. Innovation parks. Now we see universities like His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid has said we we don't want only to graduate students, but we want to graduate companies. And now main major universities, you know, uh, in the UAE, they have innovation parks. We have the Sharjah Research Technology Innovation Park, which focused on 3D printing, and they have the largest 3D printing exhibition that is going on since one month. Uh, we have higher colleges of technology, which they have established a free zone, you know, and graduating students, you know, uh, to come up with a startup companies. Khalifa Innovation Center, uh, uh, Ras Al Khaimah, American University of Ras Al Khaimah, and the United Arab Emirates University Science Innovation Park. These, these innovation park, of course, the purpose of this innovation park is to take ideas from projects, you know, from students' projects to commercialization. So students can, can, can establish their businesses and they can establish their, uh, their startup companies. Abu Dhabi is becoming a leading, uh, you know, R&D hub for AI. Uh, again, Mohammed bin Zayed University of AI, but not that. Now, uh, Abu Dhabi has established the Advanced Technology Research Council with the Technology Innovation Institute. And the focus of this is to grow the local Emirati uh, R&D researchers in quantum computing and autonomous and robotics, cryptography, advanced material, uh, directed energy, digital security, and, and secure system. And we have the best companies in Abu Dhabi. One of these companies is G42, the company that has built the second biggest testing center in the world after China. They have a, a, a supercomputing, a supercomputer, and it's the number, two, it's, it's ranked 26th in the world. And, the, and also under the G42 is the Inception Institute of Artificial Intelligence, which is focused on, on, on applied research, on patents, uh, publication. So, so uh, I think, you know, uh, we have different initiatives in the country, whether on a federal level, whether on Emirates level, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and these, uh, I think is going to drive AI further with the focus on R&D and the right investment on the locals and the, on the Emirati to have them, you know, doing the research in these areas, uh, I think the most important thing. These are some of the things which the country has established, AI labs, uh, the importance of data, and these labs are in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, uh, data platforms, we're talking about uh, smart Dubai data pulse, hackathon, you know, engaging the public and the civic society in large to use data and to develop algorithms to solve some challenges. So these are some of the efforts which are going on. Uh, 
Uh, and I think there is a focus also on promoting the ethical and responsible use of AI through the UAE Regulation Lab. This is a lab that was established to look into agile laws and regulation, uh, provide license to test specific technologies and autonomous uh, vehicle. And also Dubai has, has, has came up with in 2019 with the AI ethics principles guidelines. And they have used, it, used this through 18 use cases to look into the fairness, accountability, transparency in AI systems. So from the developer side and also from the user side. And they have established an ethical advisory board in March 2019. So these efforts and the World Government Summit, of course, looking into driving global forum on governance of AI, I think this is all good taking, you know, focusing more on the responsible use of AI. But what I say here is that we need to be part of intergovernmental agreement, such as the OECD principles of AI, where more than 42 countries from around the world signed on this agreement for the safe and for the ethical use of AI, and also for the global partnership on AI, which is again a global partnership that brought around 14 countries in the world uh, uh, to look into the, 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 the safe and the responsible use of AI. I think we need to be part of this uh, agreement. One important thing I want to mention here is that uh, we have come up, our, our, our Emirati, you know, uh, uh, people, they really came up with a startup company. And I really want to focus here on, on this company called uh, SPL, which is established as, as, as a startup within Eptic in Abu Dhabi uh, by a local Emirati female entrepreneur. And now her solution, it's AI-based solution to analyze source code uh, to accelerate migration to the cloud and used by companies such as British Telecom. These are success stories. These are inspiring stories of how UAE talent can really be established, can establish you know, businesses and the startups and can flourish and can grow you know, to the world. This is about the tech ecosystem. I don't think that there is time to go into this, but there is a much uh, also focus on, on establishing a, te a, te a technology startup ecosystem in the UAE. And you can see from Abu Dhabi Hub 27 to Dubai, uh, uh, Dubai Startup Hub to Crypto Lab to Eptic uh, to Area 2071 within Emirates Tower to Sharjah, Shira. These are different. Uh, incubator accelerator programs uh, in, in the UAE. These are some of the use cases for the government. I think there is no time to go. Maybe we'll take some questions. But but uh, uh, and and this is you know how the UAE is trying to 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 bring this brand internationally. Okay, through through different mechanisms. So UAE is a hub for hosting global AI event. The first global challenge, 2019, which was. I think it was in, 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 in February or, or January 2000, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in 2019, which brought around 15, 1,500 students from 190 countries around the world to design robotic-based AI solution to solve you know, uh, some challenges, such as cleaning you know, pollution within the ocean. We have the World Government Summit, which is considered to be an international platform you know, for the debate on AI. Uh, and we have the AI Everything Summit. Again, it's one of the international summit that brings experts from around the world uh, in, in the AI. And this brings me uh, to my uh, last uh, slide. And this is my, my, my own post postulations into what we need, where we need really to focus on. Because uh, again, I teach uh, science and technology policy at Mohammed bin Rashid School of Government. And, and I think we need to focus on, on, on these things, investment in education and the skilling workforce at all levels in AI and new technologies. And I think we, we recognize that we need to do, to do more on, onto this. Uh, also on policies and regulation to accommodate to privacy and data governments, data protection you know, in the country. Uh, focus on building a strong R&D ecosystem in AI and advanced technology through proper funding and linking university, universities, research centers, and government and, ind and industry, that, that triple helix, uh, building a startup ecosystem and accelerator program that will promote local Emirati tech entrepreneurs, addressing cybersecurity risks through proper education, awareness, and technology measure 
and finally joining intergovernmental agreement such as the OECD principles of AI and global partnership of, of AI. This brings me uh, to the end of my presentation. And uh, now I want to ask the audience, can the UAE be at the forefront in the AI race by 2030? I will leave it to our audience here to tell us. And maybe they can say yes or no in the chat because unfortunately we did not implement poll. Otherwise, this will be a very good uh, poll question. True. Uh, from I hope that I convinced you know <laughs> I convinced the audience here uh, with the answer. Uh, so with that, uh, Muhammad, uh, it's yes. yours now to take. Thank the you, question. thank you, Dr. Said. Really, it's this is really uh, one of the most uh, great presentation I have seen for uh, for years, honestly. And uh, actually, you know, like uh, you know, looking at how the UAE holistically is trying to implement an AI, and as you said. It's not implementing only AI only. It has to be productive. It has to be something really bringing a value to, to the community. And this reminds me of something, you know, uh, right now when we were, you were talking, I remember when His Highness was, you know, uh, talk about Dubai Internet City and saying, why well, would I think next year we'll open a, a Dubai Internet City? And everybody said, okay, you know, there is no Dubai Internet City in any place in the world. What, what's this happening? And this uh, will be a, a project must not even, uh, you know, succeed. In the opening in the next year, he said that, you know, uh, you know, a statement I never really forget it. He said, his highness said, you know, people say I take lots of risks. You know what is the biggest risk? The biggest risk not to take risk at all. Mm -hmm. And I think we can see UAE, uh, you know, uh, a 50 years old country, uh, even in the 15th and 10th in, in many of the, of the indexes you, you described today, it does mean, yes, you will be there, inshallah, by 2030, because, you know, in 50 years, you become one of the most important countries in, in digital in many aspects here in living and all. And I think we have a good chance here, inshallah, to be 2030 to, 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 to happen. We have many questions, actually. I will try to summarize, you know, I'll try to get, you know, some of these. But since the last one, you were talking about academic and how the collaboration between universities and so on. We have a question here about, you know, from Dr. S uh, Professor Satya from UK, how should academic institutions, universities and research centers expand more upon bilateral and multidisciplinary working together to bring more future ideas and collaboration together? Uh, this is a very uh, uh, good question from, from Satya. Yes, I mean, uh, it's not just only we're talking about local institutions, but as well as, as well as global institutions. And I think, you know, to answer this question, we need really to build, uh, we need to build the, the R&D ecosystem properly in the country. With the, with, the, with the local uh, academic and, and research institutions, as well as with the global uh, institutions. There are some initiatives going on, like I said, now with the Abu Dhabi uh, and, uh, Advanced Research Technology Council is looking really to, to establish uh, Abu Dhabi as, as a center for R&D, but also the strategy itself, the UAE 2031 strategy looks into uh, uh, having this uh, uh, virtual, um, what is called the Virtual AI Institute. And this virtual AI institute, as, as I said, that the, the purpose of it is really to tap into the resources, you know, you know, uh, uh, that are not in the UAE, but also in, in, in other countries. And I think, may, and I think, of course, the the, the 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 AI office has already signed MOUs with many countries around. I mean, like Oxford University and 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 like some other uh, institutes uh, in UK and abroad. But we need to expand in this. We need to have more bilateral uh, cooperation uh, since, of course, the UAE has re-established ties with Israel. I think uh, uh, there is a lot going on now in, in this space between the UAE and Israel. Uh, Israel is very close to us. Maybe they are more, they, they are in a better position there than us in, 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 in many indicators, especially in AI. Uh, but uh, uh, there will be a, another session coming actually next week where I will speak with some of the 
uh, venture capitalist uh, coming from from Israel about investment, about how you know the two countries can invest in, 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 and exchange you know technologies together. But you know there is no straight answer to this question. I think we need to do more on the bilateral relations with other with other universities, and this depends really on our universities ecosystems within the UAE to go and yeah. tie link you know a twin with other universities abroad in terms of uh, of 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 of, uh, of r and d that's great thanks a lot uh, we have here from dr zubair as well you know like what's the future of humanity uh, is, is it you know with ai such that we enhance our being through ai or robotics or will it be destroy us you know like i think i have another question saying the same how will save the jobs you know someone also is worried about the jobs you know, like, you know, lots of people lose their jobs, but I believe maybe we knew this is an important people are really, you know, there's some fears also from AI. The future is bad. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, <laughs> don't, no, don't quote don't me on, on this. <laughs> no, I don't know. Don't no. quote me. Uh, um, uh, I think, yes, the society is very concerned about the future of the humanity. Uh, you know, as we're going into these technologies, I think I think the foremost important thing is that uh, we need to establish values, values and ethics. And like I said, how we can use AI creatively and responsibly. Uh, and at the same time, you know, we need to admit that people, they need to reskill themselves. They need to adapt. If to tomorrow a machine will come and take my job, okay, I'd, better, I'd, I'd rather think how I can improve myself and be superior to the machine. What are the jobs? And, and of course, if you look now, look into the World Economic Forum, the 2020 Future of Jobs Report. There will still be jobs not just for, mach for, for, for machines, but those jobs which require interaction, yes. uh, human, human touch, human interactions are going to remain. We will need doctors, we will need nurses, we will need psychologists as, as we go into this technological <laughs> revolution. We will need, uh, we will need, you know, other other business jobs like marketing like sales like all this but we're talking here about the repetitive tasks which the machines are good at that it's good to give to the machine because of the efficiency because of the productivity and we need i mean no one wants to be you know to stay in, in a particular position for the rest of her of, of his or her life i mean oh. okay, let's talk about a receptionist whether a, rece a receptionist would want to be a receptionist for his or her entire life. No, of course they want to do something better. If the machine will come and I will have a robot, you know, as a receptionist, let the robot be a receptionist. But the person can 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 do better than 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 the job of a receptionist. The job that requires mental work, the jobs that requires intellectual work. And I think there is room. I mean, everyone talks in, 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 in this area. There will be more jobs created with the technology than jobs that will be destroyed. Yes, there will be jobs that will be displaced, but more jobs will, will, be, will, will, will be created. Look at, the, you know, when we have, when we automated ATM, has the cashier vanished from the banks? You know, we, but, but it's good that you have ATM. You can go at any time in, in three o'clock in the morning and withdraw money from, from the bank, but the cashier is there. Maybe the number of cashiers have reduced, but now also the the, 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 the job of the cashier has evolved into probably wealth management, into, into giving you some other services, not the, you know, the, 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 the tedious service like, you know, withdrawing, you know, money from the ATM machine. That's true. That's very, very valid. Thanks a lot for, for it. So it's good for humanity, but we should reskill themselves. It's not... Yes, yeah, they job will be tomorrow. Humanity, we need to establish, like I said, the principles, guiding the principles. Yes. And Dubai, yes, we have the ethical, I think, sorry, the ethical, uh, uh, Dubai, smart Dubai, we have some ethical, AI ethical policy or something like that, right, the doctor? Right, right. Yeah, the, the, the ethical uh, uh, principles, 
uh, you know, where we, and we also, it's, it's going to be different. I mean, there is no one size fits all. I mean, if each country has their own challenges and, and, and the way they want to use AI. I think it's going to be based on, 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 on principles, on values. What are the values of the society? And we saw today, I mean, Zubair has, has, has spoken about it, like the COVID-19, what the COVID-19 has done to the humanity. Yes, we understand there is a big calamity, but at the same time, there is there is a big talk now that you know, you know uh, that you know as a society we need to instill you know bring different values for the society to live, for the family, for for the society as a whole. You know, for 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 looking into 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 the finite resources that are that are on the earth. You know, I mean, talking about a green economy, talking about, you know, uh, green cities and all that. I mean, this is like uh, people now, many people are thinking, and I think this is going to accelerate the, 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 uh, the sustainable development goals because people are now more concerned with the environment because we've seen what happened and we've seen how we've been impacted and how the world has been impacted. So we are more now, you know, aware of how we need to build our societies, what values we need to instill in, 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 our, in our families and our kids. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. I think we have another one which is more uh, in the commercial side, which is very important. Since AI have, will be there in many, in many areas, what about the SME, which is the business, one of the most important thing in business, is small and medium enterprises. So how will AI really will, will support, you know, uh, this kind of businesses here in UAE and other places as well? It's, it's a good question. I think SME, of course, is a, an important part of the economy, and especially for the UAE economy. Uh, Thirty percent of our of, of our GDP is coming from the SMEs. Okay, so so talking about SME, how how they can survive? Definitely, we're talking here about cost efficiency. We're talking about optimizing, you know, operations. If there is a chance, you know, I mean, why would an SME go, for example, if I have an SME, why would I need to build an IT infrastructure if I can go to the cloud and subscribe to the, to, to the infrastructure that will save me, that will save me cost, that will save me resources. So we need SMEs, they need to think and they need to accept the reality and adapt, you know, to the, to the, to the, to the current reality. They can leverage on the AI on certain areas. They can leverage on the cloud. They can leverage and, and they can, of course, you know, um, uh, uh, upskills, you know, the, the, the SMEs task force, you know, to leverage the AI solutions that are uh, uh, that are there or the AI solution that will be developed. And I think there is many startups really in this area which is stepping into SME, serving SME by data and so on, giving more insights and able to optimize some of their processes make it sure. easier for them, which is great as well. Um, now here a question which is very important, you know, since the doctor you were studying in 80s and 90s or end of 80s, AI was there, I believe AI was even there before. Right. But now why AI started picking up last few years? You know, what is the driving, you know, forces here I behind it? Like I have mentioned this, there were three driving factors. One is yeah. that the, the, the high computing power that now we have, we have, a, you know, our smartphone is, is, is now, yes. Uh, uh, whether it's iPhone or Android is, is more is more pow powerful than the IBM 286, which was there to you know 20 or, or 30 years ago. So one is the computing power. The second yeah. is the, uh, uh, of course the big data. We have now you know the, imagine how much of big data the world generates every day. How many quantities? Cool. Of, 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 of bytes that the world is generate through IoT. So there is more of big data that we can train the algorithm with because those algorithms, they, they, they are hungry for data. You know, the more the data you, you train the algorithm, well, the better, it's not always the case, but up to the certain, you know, up to the certain plateau, but big data. And the third is of course, the, the technology itself, it has improved, you know, I mean, oh, I just worked on, on the back of propagation algorithm in 1988. Now we're talking about reinforcement learning, we're talking about uh, generative adversarial networks and all this. So the algorithm has improved and there are so many, you know, algorithms, big data and computing power to train the AI systems. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Doctor. I think we have an interesting question here. Maybe you can see if we take more or we can close. You know, it's very, the, 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 the privacy is an issue. 
Uh, this is the last question. Can we take? Is the privacy an issue? Of course. It yeah, is yeah. You know, this is, yeah, the, the data manipulation and privacy. People are getting worried today because, you know, people get to know more about them. They know even everything about what's happening. So how if can we, you know, uh, how can we really about, mitigate this one? If we need to worry about our privacy, we need to worry about the companies that are there at the moment who are knowing more about ourselves. <laughs> knowing more of, about us than we know about ourselves. I don't want to name them, but all these big companies, they have our data, where, where do we shop, where do we go, where, how do we move, what do we do? So, you know, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not think, uh, saying that this is a justification, but uh, I think there should be always a balance between privacy and between, you know, the use of technology. Of course, you, we, cannot, uh, we cannot shut down completely uh, yeah. uh, otherwise you will you will not be able to use this platform that's right yes i think that as okay. we said even in but the to some concept, extent i think it's a worry yes go ahead yes it is it is it is a worry concern. and i think through like look at the gdpr you know gdpr is, is established to really maintain people privacy especially for the european countries and now yeah. you know the world is saying that gdpr is going to stifle innovation so, so, so you, you, you need to strike really a balance to what extent you want to relate and to what extent you want to open, you know, for innovation. And I'm, and I'm saying, yes, we need a data protection law. This is one thing that I have been calling all the time in the UAE. We need a data protection law on a federal level. There is a data law for Dubai. Yes, on a federal level, we need a data protection law. We need a data management strategy. We need a data governance strategy. Governance. And That's I right. think this is, this is, these are very important. Issues. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Said. We have even more questions actually, but I think for the sake of the time, I really like to thank you very much for this inspiring talk. Uh, and uh, I think it's like, we can even uh, rewrite these questions, uh, you know, uh, privately. And I think this is a great talk and we hope to see Next few years, Dubai really and UAE, sorry, UAE, but, but you know, like in the top 10, as you said, and I think this is happening, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. And thank, thank you, you, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Zubair and Fatima. Fatima, the, Fatima the to you. everyone who made this, uh, this talk tonight possible. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, to the thank you all. Dr. Dr. Said, we need another session. So maybe. Um, the team at RAP will uh, will not let you go easily. We will try and organize something in the coming future so that we can have more time. Inshallah, inshallah, Shah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.